Здравствуйте, Намошкар, welcome you to the Friday lecture organized by the Russian Center for Science and Culture in Kolkata. Every week we deal with a personality who have contributed immensely for the cause of friendship between the two countries, Russia and India. Today we'll be focusing on a person who was the first Russian ambassador of beauty who has brought to India the immortal message of art and we are grateful to him for his inspiring thoughts and his loyal cooperation in bringing the souls of Russia and India closer. This was said by the famous Indian historian Dr. Kalidash Nag about Nikolai Konstantinovich Ruerik, who had a great love for India and he spent few years of his life on this very soil of India, which he considered as the place of connection between the culture of Russia and India. The ancient root lies there in India, he thought. That was maybe his hypothesis to find out the kinship between ancient India and Slavs and the common roots of our culture. However, this great man settled down in India with his family members, with his wife and sons, and also became a loyal lover of India and her culture and a great friend of the Indian people. At the age of 19, he was admitted to the St. Petersburg University to the Imperial Academy of Arts. He passed out from there with flying colors in 1897, first from the Imperial Academy of Arts. Then the next year, he got the degree in law in 1898. And his interest was immense for architecture and artworks of ancient Rouge. And that's why he traveled a lot, almost all over the land of Russia to find out the architectural beauty. And also he took part in the fresco paintings of few churches. His interest was great, not only for his own culture, but to the ancient roots and culture of the world. And particularly for the Russian people, he was looking for the roots. And that's why he was fascinated with an idea that most probably in the East, in the Orient, the root is there of the relationship between India and Russia or the India and the Slav people. He thought that in the Himalayan region, there is a locality which he named as Shambhala and there the incarnation of Buddha has taken place. His name is Moitreo. He has a great desire to visit this land for his own purpose and to find out the root of the culture, the relationship between our two countries. However, he was the most eminent painter of his time and he was entrusted with the responsibility of the various important positions, like the director of the Academy of Arts, and then also as the president of the World of Art Society under the management of Sergei Diaghilev, the eminent cultural personality. He was also a scenarist. He did a lot of works for the ballet performance, for the opera performance in the theatrical Playhouses, And also, he did a lot of work. I can say that he had in his, uh, in his credit more than 7,000 paintings and nearly 30, 000, 30 volumes of literary works, including two volumes of poetry or poems. His poems were known very much because they were also like an illustration. And Maxim Gorky, his great friend, mentioned that these poems are like the scriptures. 
He also worked with Maxim Gorky for the preservation of art, for the protection of art in his own country. He even was considered as a prospected candidate as the People's Commissariat for the Culture of the Russian government. However, he couldn't take up that post, but one of his friends, his classmate, became the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Georgi Chicherin. He met him later on after his exploration in different parts of the world, particularly in the Orient or the Asian countries. He had to go to the faraway area from Moscow in the Karelia region. And from there he went to Finland. And from Finland, he went to England. In England, there was an exhibition of his artworks, which was visited by many eminent people, including Rabindranath Tagore. In London, he met persons like Herbert Wells, the fam famous writer, and the famous British Buddhist, Christmas Humphrey. Tagore visited his exhibition and he with his family members, including his two sons and wife, visited Tagore at the residential place where Tagore was staying in London. Tagore mentioned after visiting his exhibition that your paintings bear no resembles to the paintings of others and words are inadequate to express their content. Your art is highly original and because it is truly a great work of art and they are searching for the truth. The force of his talent and pureness in the, of his heart led Rerik to the discovery of his inexhaustible sources of spiritual kinship between the Russian and Indian people. He was a collaborator with Maxim Gorky in his, in his time when he was an eminent person, but before he became an eminent artist, his teacher, Vladimir Stasov, famous cultural personality and art critic, took him to Leo Tolstoy, the giant of Russian and world literature, because it was in the mind of Vladimir Stasov that no one else but Leo Tolstoy should initiate him, should give the initiation to Nikolai Rurik to the world of art. Nikolai Rurik carried one of his paintings, which was titled as The Messenger, and it depicted about the boatman who is crossing the river against the current to a certain place to inform his own people about the forthcoming danger. Leo Tolstoy watched the painting very carefully and advised him like the boatman, you should also, in your life, keep your aim much higher than your goal. Otherwise, the life will bring you down towards the downstream. Nikolai Rurik followed his advice and Tolstoy also advised him to know more about India. And India was a great attraction for him and for his wife, Yelena Rurik. They both studied immensely Buddhism, and Vedantic philosophy. They read Ramakrishna Paramahamsa's teachings and the writings of Swami Vivekananda. They also read Mahabharata, other epics, and also they read Mount Bhagavad Gita. Before coming to India, he made many paintings and they were known sometimes as the uh, characters with the mythical, uh, mythical uh, characters he made some paintings and also Road to India was one of his paintings. And these paintings created sensation like it is a write-up write -up about the road to history or something like that. And this was like, he, he wrote also an essay on it and that was like an illustration. Later on, some eminent persons will mention about them later, who mentioned that his pain was also no less mitre than his brushes. And the famous writer, Maxim Gorky, whom I mentioned about, he mentioned about him that he was the great intuitionist of our time. And Tagore praised him more and Tagore invited him to come to India. He accepted the invitation 
and later on he came to India. We'll deal about it in our next lecture, next discussion. But before that, we must say that he became more and more drawn towards this country, which was so dear to his heart and soul. And his paintings, which created much more sensation, will be discussed in details by the literary critics, by the art critics throughout the world for centuries. Because all over the world, in different museums and galleries, his paintings one can visit, one can see. And it will be great for us if the Indian people get an opportunity with the help of the Russian embassy or the Russian culture for science and arts the, to, for, for organizing an exhibition in India of Nikolai Rudik to commemorate his anniversary, to pay tribute to this great soul. And he also made some other paintings which we shall discuss later on, which were equally great, but his banner of peace, which is the protector for the world culture heritage, also to be known to the world, because that was also a great initiative taken by him when no one thought about it. He was not only a painter, an artist, an architect, and also a great peacemonger who worked a lot for the peace in the world, for the protection of culture against war. We salute him on his birth anniversary, on the 146th birth anniversary of Nikolai Rudik. We'll be talking about him, we'll be discussing about this great soul in our next lecture too. Thank you very much. Till then, Dasvedaniya, Unardarshanayachar.